The first one, okay? And this is the part, this is what I mean by um, um, one of the challenges that people have sometimes is they're familiar with the, with the organ, but they're not, they don't know it in detail. So the first one, the brain, right? We know that the brain maintains the neurological and the mental health of the patients, right? So that's what the brain does. So it's why we think, talk, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to affect the coordination, right? It's going to affect their balance. It's going to affect their speech. It's going to affect their ability to swallow, right? And so here's the thing. If I'm aware of, if I think of, let's say, for example, I don't know at, at all the specifics, right? I don't know all the specifics of a, of a um, diagnosis it gives me, but I do know it has to do with the brain, right? So if I know that, then that means I know this patient's speech is going to be altered. I know that their, their ability to swallow will probably be altered. I know that the, their ability to walk normally may be altered too. Like all these things are going to be altered um, because I know it affects the brain. So that means as a nurse, right, now I would, here's, now I would do what? I would be monitoring their level of consciousness. I would be monitoring how well they can swallow. You know, I'll be monitoring their, like, their speech, like how, if they're talking normally or not, I'll be monitoring their gait. You see how this helps you to identify and think, you know, what, it, what the issue is rather than being so concerned about every single little detail. So um, a, a good example of this is um, something called autonomic disre dysreflexia. So autonomic dysre dysreflexia, this is actually a condition that happens primarily when the patient has spinal cord injury, right? And spinal cord injury is a permanent diagnosis, you know, where they can be paraplegic, um, usually paraplegic, there's hemiplegia, but usually paraplegic. And they can, be, they can be also paraplegic from the neck down or from the waist down. So what happens with this patient is that they need to be, um, Usually they need to be on a Foley catheter or they need to be straight cath. So what will happen is that if they don't, if they don't receive this, like if they don't get the, the um, Foley cath or straight cath, then it will, make, it will trigger um, their central nervous system and they'll begin to have very high blood pressure and they'll begin to be sweaty. You know, um, I've I seen this in real life. Uh, them, Happen, it happening before, you know, and everything. So when we have, what we have to do, usually what relieves this problem is getting, the, getting them straight cap as, as soon as possible, and then also, you know, giving them some blood pressure medications and giving them some fluids. Um, well, just, sorry, just giving them some blood pressure medications. So the next one is, is lungs. So what do the lungs do? So the lungs, this is where the gas exchange takes place at the alveolar level, right? So the patient can breathe normally. That's what's happening. So now I'm thinking, okay, if there's something wrong with the lungs, what would I monitor? So that's gonna include the respirations, right? The lung sounds, um, ABG, so I need to know what the ABGs are, right? So these are just the basics to help you when you're seeing disease process that you don't recognize. The heart, same thing. What the heart does is that it pumps blood through the circulatory system um, with by contraction and dilation. So if there's something wrong with the heart, then there may be an issue with their fluid balance, especially if they have heart failure. Um, with the fluid balance, their heart rate will be messed up, will be you know off or altered. Also tissue perfusion because remember it's pumping blood through the circulatory system and the circulate and the circulatory system is circulation. That's blood flow, you know. So the the perfusion of the tissues are going to be decreased or abnormal. The liver, so the liver and the kidneys are not the same, right? The liver metabolizes and excretes everything that comes in and goes out of the body. The liver, though, one of the main differences about the liver is that it also houses the clotting factors and fatty acids, right? So those triglycerides are also where the liver is housed, too. So Here's the thing, let's say the patient had a liver biopsy, right? So then I would be concerned 
about looking at their PTT and the INR because why I'm aware of what the liver houses, which is the chronic factors. Um, also, I would be monitoring their electrolyte levels because we just mentioned earlier that it metabolizes and it also excretes. Um, and then skin color too. The liver also affects skin color. So jaundice, this is why the patients, you know, when they, you know when people say they drink a lot, right, then it affects their liver and, and then they will become jaundice and have that yellowing color. I have, I've seen patients literally where, you know, they had, they, where they, they had alcoholism for years and they literally, their whole body was yellow. Um, their eyes, their, their sclera is yellow, very, very yellow. Some of them, it gets to the point where now they have ascites and they, because their, their stomach is so swollen, so now they have to go through paracentesis, you know, every, um, like once a month sometimes because it's so much, it's so swollen. Even after stop, even after um, stopped, after they had stopped drinking. The kidneys, so here's the difference of the kidneys. The difference of the kidneys is that it filters out metabolic waste, sorry, metabolic waste. So the kidneys is more so with waste, so that's why uh, this is going to be more involved with the urinary output. Um, it regulates also acid-base concentration. It also is involved with maintaining electrolyte balance, more so though because um, when patients have, for example, kidney disease, they have horrible labs. Their electrolytes are through the roof because they're not able to excrete all of it out. Also, you would monitor their BUN and creatinine, so you have to know what the BUN and creatinine is, right, um, when it comes to the kidneys. Then the pancreas is another good one. The pancreas, and these are all the main larger organs. So the pancreas, this one secretes hormones, right, and then it also um, secretes digestive enzymes, including insulin, right? So Here's the part where you make that connection now. So if the patient has pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer, like anything that's affecting their pancreas, that means that their output, their intake and their output is going to be affected, right? Because they need their digestive enzymes to break down that glucose and the insulin to, to move the glucose to the, the different parts of the body. So their intake and output is going to be affected, meaning that sometimes they're going to have problems with eating and swallowing. Also, their glucose levels are also going to be affected too. You know, they, it could be very low. It could be, it could fluctuate because the pan, because the pancreas is altered. So, by being aware of these main organ organs and their function, it, it helps you to identify what you will look out for. Because um, even if you don't know every single disease title.